Hello and welcome to the Geomestic channel. In today's lesson we're going to be taking a look at a super handy little formula for finding the area of a triangle using the sine function. Before we get started, you can print off the guided notes worksheet found in the description if you'd like to follow along and write some things down as we go. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would we want to find the area of a triangle with trigonometry? The area of a triangle in general, that's a pretty basic formula. Area is just equal to half base times height. Why would we want to complicate things? Well, the answer to that is that formulas are really great when you already know all the variables. If you have a triangle and you're given the base and the height, well, of course, you can just plug those in and you've got your answer pretty quickly. It's when pieces of the formulas are missing, that's when things can get super frustrating. And there's really no roadmap once you get past the formula. If you're missing one of the variables, uh, there could be thousands of different ways to find the missing pieces. So the formula that we're about to develop likely came from a mathematician's attempt to find the area of a triangle when maybe the base and height are not known and you have different values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at um, a triangle like this. We're going to label the vertices ABC. And we're going to express base and height uh, in a little bit of a different way. So once I have my triangle, I'm gonna draw a line from point B down to the base, perpendicular to the base which would be the height of that triangle. And then we're going to um, write or express the sides with a letter that is just um, a lowercase letter of the vertex opposite of that side. So for example, if this is um, angle A, we're gonna call this opposite side here, lowercase a. And then vertex B, we're gonna call this whole length, that whole side of the triangle B. And then lowercase c over here. Okay, so we know that the area of a triangle is half base times height. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use trigonometry to express the height of this triangle uh, in terms of the sides and the angles of the triangle. So how do we do that? If we take a look at this triangle right here, so just this little triangle on the side. Okay, so this triangle right here. Using this acute angle A, I'm gonna use a sine ratio to write H in terms of the other sides and angles of this triangle. So what does that look like? If I write sine of angle A, so remember what the ratio is for sine, sine is opposite leg over hypotenuse. So again, this little triangle, if this is angle A, what is opposite, what leg is opposite of angle A? That would be H over the hypotenuse, which in, again, the little triangle, the hypotenuse would be C. Okay, so my sine ratio for angle A is H over C. Now, if I put this over one, what I've done is I've created a proportion, which with proportions you can cross multiply and you can get an equivalent uh, equation. So if I multiply H times one, I get H. And if I multiply C times sine A, I would just have C times sine A. So in this example, I can write the height of this triangle, h, as c times sine a. It's the same thing. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna go back up to my original triangle uh, area formula, and I'm going to replace height with c sine a. So I've got the area is equal to 1 half base, which in this particular triangle, the base is lowercase b, so I'm gonna leave that as b and then height becomes C times sine A. So I'm replacing H with C times sine of angle A. Okay, so what we have right here is an alternate formula for the area of a triangle where B and C are simply two sides of the triangle and A is the angle included between those two sides. Okay, so this might look a little complicated, but the calculator really does all the heavy lifting here. So again, so B and C, two sides of a triangle, A is the angle in between those two sides. So if I have a situation where I wanna find the area of a triangle, I don't necessarily have the base and the height, but I do know the lengths of two sides, and I know the angle in between those two sides, I can use this formula to find the area pretty quickly. Okay, so let's look at a quick example. Okay, so 
let's say, looking at a triangle, where we've got a, say a 75 degree angle, we know one side is 11 feet and the other side here is nine feet. Okay, so again, this is the situation that we're looking for. We've got an angle of a triangle, and we've got the two sides around that angle, or the angle included between those two sides. Okay, so again, our formula, one half, area is equal to one half, BC, again, B and C are two sides of a triangle, times the sine of angle A, where angle A is the angle in between those two sides. That's what we got. Now B and C, doesn't matter which one's which, it's just the two sides of the triangle. We're just going to plug this information in. So I've got the area is equal to 1 half B and C. I'm just going to write 9 and 11. Those are the two sides. Times the sine of angle A. Angle in between is 75 degrees. At this point, we're just going to go to our calculator. We're going to plug this information in. So depending on which calculator you have, um, you can just go and type this in all the way through. I have a graphing calculator here, so I can do that. So I'm gonna write it as 1 half or 0.5, use 0 0.5, times nine, times 11, times sine of angle A, which is 75 degrees. And it shows we've got uh, an area of 47.8, 47.8. The area of this triangle is 47.8. This is an area, we are in feet. So we're going to write it as square feet. Okay, so think of how uh, much of a time saver this is with this information. So if I were to find the area of this using half base times height, I first have to decide what is my base. Then I have to find a height of this triangle that is perpendicular to that base, which I've got no right angles here, so I'd have to do a little bit of an extra um, step of finding a height when I don't have uh, a height given. So you can see how using this alternate formula for area of a triangle really saves us some time. We don't have to go through the uh, process of finding a base and a height. We can just use the two sides and the angle in between. Okay, so by itself, um, kind of a useful formula, but where this really will help us if you've already looked at finding areas of regular polygons, you remember kind of how much of a process it can be if you um, are missing uh, an apothem. If you remember the formula 1 half AP, you kind of have to go through a process of finding an apothem and then a perimeter. It can be a little tedious. So where this formula can help us is finding areas of regular polygons. I'll give you an example of, we'll just go with a regular octagon. Let's see if I can draw one well enough. That's decent. So let's say we had a regular octagon. So an octagon, again, eight sides, regular meaning all the sides and angles are the same. And I wanna find the area of this regular octagon. Okay, so if you remember uh, in the lesson we've done previously, to find the area of any regular polygon, you can use this formula. Area is equal to one half AP, where A is the apothem, or the, the segment that goes from the center of the figure uh, to the midpoint of one of the sides, or perpendicular to a side. P stands for perimeter. Okay, so again, formulas are great if you knew the apothem and the perimeter. Uh, but what if you don't? What if you're given maybe a radius? So let's say we have a regular octagon and we know a radius of, we'll say 10 inches. Okay, so here's where my alternate triangle formula is gonna help. I'm gonna bypass this formula. I'm not gonna use this formula in this case because without an apothem or a perimeter, I'd have to find both of those things, which does take quite a bit of time. So instead, I'm gonna utilize the triangle formula of 1 half BC sine A. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this triangle, okay, so I kind of enclose uh, this triangle here, where I've got two sides of 10 inches. Okay, that radius is the same to any vertex. And I can pretty quickly find the angle here, that central angle. Uh, if you remember, if I drew a radius to every vertex, I would have eight congruent triangles, and I would have eight congruent central angles to figure out the measure of that central angle. We can just take 360 divided by the number of central angles. In this case, eight, it's an octagon. 360 divided by eight is 45 degrees. So I've got this angle right here is 45 degrees. Now what I'd like to do, 
I like to just kind of come off to the side. I'm going to draw this triangle a little bit bigger just so I can work inside. I have 10 inches on each side. I've got the 45 degree angle up at the top. Okay, so this situation should look familiar. So what we just did using this formula, we could find the area of this triangle where we have two of the sides and we know the included angle. The angle in between them is 45. So using my formula, I can find the area of this triangle, okay, this triangle right here. And since we know that this regular octagon is gonna have eight of those triangles all the way around, once I get the area of this triangle, I can just multiply my answer by eight to get the area of the whole octagon. Okay, so it's gonna take quite a bit less time than trying to find the apothem and find the perimeter in this particular circumstance. So plug in what we know, the area is equal to one half, B and C, two sides of the triangle. In this case, they're both 10 times the sine of the angle, which is 45. Once again, we go straight to our calculator. 0.5 half times B and C, which are both 10, and then times the sine of the angle 45 degrees. Okay, and you see we get about 35.355, something like that. Okay, so remember this is just the area of one of eight triangles, eight congruent triangles in that regular octagon. So to get the area of the whole octagon, my last step here would just be to multiply that whole thing times eight to get the whole area. I'm just gonna use what I've already got here in my calculator so I don't round. And it looks like we've got a total area of 282 point, we'll go nearest tenth, we'll say 0.8. We're in inches this time, so inches squared. Okay, so we're going from an entire process of um, drawing the apothem, splitting the triangle in half, using some trigonometry to find missing pieces with the one half uh, AP formula to just finding the area of one triangle, multiplying it by the number of triangles. Okay, cuts your time uh, down by quite a bit. All right, let's do one more. Let's go with uh, a regular hexagon this time. Okay, now again, um, the 1 half AP formula is sometimes quicker in other one, uh, certain circumstances more than others. Uh, this is an example where really either one would probably um, get you the answer probably about as quickly as the other. But let's go ahead and use this triangle formula. Okay, so I've got a regular hexagon this time. We'll say that one side is four centimeters. Okay, so again, if I wanted to use one half AP, it would be pretty quick to find the perimeter just because one side is four, they're all four. And I could, again, draw the apothem straight down uh, and utilize the 30, 60, 90s with the hexagon. You'll see that those triangles pop up, but I'm gonna use the triangle formula. So one half BC side A. Okay, so I've got four centimeters. If I create my triangle down here at the bottom, which again, there's six of those all the way around if I drew every radius, I know that since all the sides are four, I've got this side down here is four centimeters. Okay, I can get my angle again. Central angle is 360 divided by N, or the number of sides, which in this case, we get a 60 degree angle here. Okay, 60 degrees. Now, because in a hexagon, you have the special case that this triangle down here, because your um, vertex angle up there is 60, or your central angle, all your angles are actually 60. This is an equilateral triangle. And in an equilateral triangle, all sides are the same. So I've got a four centimeter side. That also means that um, each radius is gonna be four centimeters as well. Okay, so this is specific to that hexagon. Okay, so I could draw the apothem down, do some 30, 60, 90s. I'm just gonna go with this. So I've got two sides, I've got the angle in between them. I'm gonna plug that in, find the area of that triangle down there at the bottom. So I've got one half, B and C are both four, times the sine of 60. All right, so going to the calculator, we've got a half or 0.5, B and C are both four, 
and then sine of 60. And we got about 6 point, we'll say 6.93. So the area of this triangle right here is equal to 6.93 square centimeters. In a regular hexagon, you've got six of those. So we're gonna multiply that area times six, which is gonna give us a total area of 41 point, uh, we'll round to the hundredth this time, we'll say 41.57 square centimeters. Okay, so there's that one. Maybe not a formula that you'd have to use every day, um, but in certain circumstances, certainly it could be a time saver and really helpful to kind of have in your back pocket when you need it. So that's it for this one. Take a second, hit the thumbs up button if this was helpful for you and consider subscribing to the Geomestic channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.